dude. In every dark place that I left on the way, I don't need your help. I'll never find you, I said, to the one that I spoke to again. It was here, it was simple, and it wouldn't work, but it got me to where I began. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Proud of Percent podcast. My name is Colton. We are now at episode 10. Um, very proud to be here, very excited. Uh, it's been a great first 10 episodes, and we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Um, my guest today, it's an absolute honor, um, is Matthew Thornton from the band Vinyl Station. What up, man? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm good. This is so fun. I can't believe we haven't done it 10 times already. Well, well, we, we may have, for all people know. Who knows? Um, Matthew, is, like I said, is the, the front man of the band Vinyl Station, um, indie rock group here from here in Phoenix. Um, you're originally from Chicago, correct? Yes. And uh, how long have you been here? About 16 or 17 years. I don't remember. Nice. And um, you guys just got signed to a label recently, um, got started. You guys have a few albums out, but currently um, we're promoting really... I can't help but talk about it right away. Um, that man is my jam. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah. Make sure you check out Vinyl Station on Spotify. Um, killer freaking band. One of my favorites. Um, the rest of the band: Brennan, Roy, Patrick, and Sturgis. Uh, we wish y'all could be here. Uh, next time we get you back on, we'll get them on here. Oh yeah. It would be it would be tight. But um, I oh I love them. Well, and we uh we like to we like to cuddle. We got a, we got a three piece in here. We got the psychedelicity in here at one so point. Good. Got a, got a full yeah. drum kit in here. Yeah, no it way. Was a, it was uh, a so, uh, yeah. We would do it in a heartbeat. It'd well, be so fun. We'll get everybody in here. Okay. So, right, what I want to get into with you is your writing process, man. Um, to be honest with you, you're one of my favorite songwriters. Um, and and That's uh, so I, I don't nice of you. I, I don't mean to overly flatter you or, or no. Or anything, I love. I you could you could go for another couple minutes. Keep talking, if you okay. Want. <laughs> <laughs> I already complimented his hair earlier, and now you no, know. I, now we're going to your songwriting. I love. I love uh, when people like it. I, it's a strange thing, though, because I I don't feel like I actually write them. I, it feels more like a, of like a channeling. So when it, when people compliment it, it's it's nice to hear, but it's also um, it doesn't really boost my ego too much or it get to me too much. Because, it, but uh, conversely, when people say that they don't like something, it doesn't really bother me that much because. Right. I feel like I kind of just stole it from another dimension, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Right. So it's not like an indictment or praise of me. It's more about the song, and so that's why I love the song. Um, and I like that they, you know, come to me or something. So right. But well, I was gonna say. Well, and you're if you're not a great songwriter, then a great finder of these songs. Yeah, that's like a, yeah. I don't know how to invent. I don't know how to write a song. I know how to get them right sort of so well with that so what goes into right. your writing process i mean do you sit waiting for the beam of light or how does that it's a weird thing it, there's a lot of a lot of different theories about writing and i love reading about uh creative people like i just read the war of art by stephen pressfield and it's super interesting and i related to a lot of that stuff like you have to do your work and sit down and inspiration you know the, one of the quotes is inspiration hits me it just so happens that it hits me every day at my desk at 9 a.m. Right. So you sit down and do your work and you'll be inspired or or you might be. Um, and there's sort of a, I relate to that a little bit, like you have to go outside if you're going to get struck by light and you have to pick up the guitar. But other than that, I kind of, usually I wait. It's sort of a weird thing. I was I was talking to my mom the other day and I was describing this this weird way of explaining songwriting, which is if you, it's kind of like having to pee. If you okay. try to go when you don't have to go, it's lame. It's right. You get right. a couple drops, it's nothing. Just wait until you have to go and it'll be good, whatever. Right. And you don't really know what's going to come out, but it, at least something will come out. Right. Um, so I have that sort of relationship with it, which is I'll pick, I, uh, I'll pick up the guitar and I'll, I'll, um, be open to it, and right. I think most of work is 
usually that way, especially maybe creative work, but um, is just picking up the guitar or being open to it or sitting at the piano or making the time to stop watching TV or get off Instagram or whatever it is and do your work. Right. But the w- once I'm writing, it, all bets are off. I don't really... Uh, we used to do these songwriter nights with some of my friends and guys I love, like Brian Chartrand, Matt Weddle, Jay Allen. And we would do songwriter nights, and they would have these really cool stories and explanations about their songs. And, you know, Brian was writing through Germany, and he saw this old castle, and it was sort of ruins, and he had this cool phrase that came up, and then he wrote a song about it. And then they'd go like, okay, that's cool, and then he would play the song, and and then it would be my turn, and they would say, okay, wh- what song are you going to do, and what is it about? And I go, this is, you know nothing yet or something or whatever and i go i have no idea what it's about i just channeled it i just had it (laughs) and my i i don't write anymore without my phone on so i captured it and now it's mine and i you know i think as soon as i die i'm gonna get sued by a few people by people and that actually wrote it and that i just (laughs) like i just heard it somehow and sucked it into this so with that, I mean, I know a lot of people yeah. think of songwriting as kind of a muscle that you have to do every day, and you have to like sit down, and I have to like grind, and I, that doesn't sound like that really pertains to you. Then, I mean, are you able to I, walk away if you're just if it's not working? Yeah, because I think the best ones are the ones that like I played one f- uh, for you today that is called "Where I Began," and um. I was watching this movie called Stuck in Love, I think. It's like with Greg Kinnear and, um, you know, other obviously other people. And uh, IMDb that. Yeah, it's good. It's a good movie. But I got done with this movie and I was like, cool. So as soon as the credits started rolling, I was like, I got to write something. I, right. Went and picked up the guitar. That song came out in as long as it takes to play it. Right. Didn't change anything. Um, and the next day we recorded it and it went on the album. Like it was one of those that just happened. It was like, you know, um, I, but you have to go sit and pick up the guitar work it. Um, but for me, I don't really think of it. I don't think of myself as an artist so much because I have no idea why, but I, I just like it and I have to do it. And then I know that sometimes I just need to go get them out or something. I don't, right. I don't really understand it. And I don't know if I want to. Right. Hell yeah. I like the idea of it just being a, um, somewhat of a bodily function or something where it's you can't ignore it or you'll get cancer or something or your kidneys will explode or right. whatever it is. <laughs> but I, I, on one hand, that's on one hand. And then on the other hand, it is, you know, I know guys who think of it like a craft Right. And they really put a lot of work in it. And some of those songs blow my mind, too. My brother is a really great writer, Charlie. And he, he sent me this song a couple of weeks ago that was just monster song. Unbelievable. And he had really worked on it. And so, but lyrically, it was just slayed me. So it was one of those where I really understand the other side, too. I tend not to have functioned very well in the crafting side of things right um i just sort of you know wait for them and then most of them aren't very good though actually <laughs> they're like that's the ones i don't show anybody those are the ones just for you you just your, sort your of wife has to hear those you on sort repeat. of sift through them. well the interesting thing too is like i feel like i've gotten pretty good at singing stuff the way that it should the way that i think it should be sung so i can try to with that skill i think i can polish some turds right right <laughs> so i could take a song that's not very good and it's like oh it sounds pretty good though right i right. can sing it well but um at the end of the day it really is just about the connection with people and if you play it for people and it doesn't connect like if there's no i think that's another weird theory of mine i think is you can only write or perform about 70 percent of the song somebody has to listen to you and meet you in the middle definitely that's killer and give to the song a little bit and then uh, you know and then you're in this sort of this big oval elevator and everybody in the you connecting 
Right. And so if it's if it's one person or twelve hundred or five thousand or whatever it is, there's a connection that you're in, but somebody has to be willing to listen a little bit and then get swept up in it and be in the song. And that's when I think it's a real song. So until it's listened to, it's just me screwing around. When I walk through the gate, I left something behind. I don't need your help. On my mission to struggle, I missed every phase. Yeah. I don't need your help. I'll never find you, I said. To the one that I spoke to again It was here, it was simple And it wouldn't work But it got me to where I began With my limits and damage I sing what I know I don't need your help Well, it's fake and it's true and it's all I can do I don't need your help I'll never find you, I said To the one that I spoke to again It was here, it was simple And it wouldn't work But it got me to where I Last place I looked, you crept up and stayed. I don't need your help. In every dark place that I left on the way, I don't need your help. I'll never find you, I said, to the one that I spoke to again. Here it was simple and it wouldn't work, but it got me to where I began. Yeah. Put a box by the door, your suitcase, and still. no more sense than it did in the world yeah. I don't need your help I'll never find you I said to the one that I spoke to again it was here it was simple and it wouldn't work but it got me to where I began it was here This is so fun. Is uh, you are like just a good listener and just super nice. So that's like I, total com like yeah. you make everybody really comfortable. I and mean, maybe not everybody, but me. Like <laughs> it's just like from the beginning. I'm an asshole. Like, Everyone gets like just speed. like super comfortable. Like that's a big deal. And to inter interviewing is an art in itself. I think that I think one of the greatest interviewers, maybe probably the greatest interviewer, is Howard Stern. Yep. But. To just make people feel like it's just you and me, we're just having a chat, no mm -hmm. big deal. Um, anyway, you're, I, I'm really, I, it's awesome. Thank you. I, I and and it's gonna be interesting. I mean, trying to, to put it all together here because I, I I like this part even the conversation. But yeah, yeah. to be honest with you, I mean that's that's something big for me. I, I'm one of those guys. I don't know if I'm one of hundreds of thousands of people who do it or one of seven, but. I love nothing more than getting on YouTube, finding your favorite artist, and going down a rabbit hole, and you end up with some weird interview yeah. where you learn something deep about them that you yeah. would never have any idea. Right. 
And for all you know, it was some weird you know person's house, and they just sat <laughs> yeah. down and started talking. Well, but we're you, we're not getting invited onto extra or something <laughs> like where it's like a five second like. So uh, how is it? What is it like doing this? And you're like, it's you know what it's like. It's, your, <laughs> it's, it's like when they interview uh, basketball players. Yep. What were you thinking when you uh, you only had a few minutes left? And you go, well, I wanted to win, so we tried to do the thing. And I get paid a like, lot of money, and what people do you be mean? mad at me. <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> Shut up. Right. Ask well, a cool question. Like th- this is this is where I think the you get to know people and and. Um, I'm interested in you and stuff like like it's a anyway it's just a really good sort of situation so thanks for having me well we'll talk about me later we're we're here for you so this is this is all about Uh, you but I mean mean, to to be honest with you I mean that's yeah I mean and and live videos online and getting to know I think I think that's hard with with younger artists and and local artists and, and things is that you don't Unfortunately, a lot of people need to be able to see the artist. They need to have a background on the artist. That's really right. how they they connect with them. And, and for me, that was just, I mean, that was huge. I mean, and, and to be honest with you, even with you, um, you know, there weren't a lot of interviews online. And, yeah. And you've got some very interesting to say. I've watched a lot of your Facebook Live videos. It's your fun <laughs> stuff that you do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, how come nobody sat down and have that dude open up about? That's you know so what I mean? nice. What he's yeah. doing? And and yeah. like I said, I mean. Your songwriting is great, and, and your your albums are wonderful, and, and it's and it's fascinating to hear how different people write and how their processes yeah. go, and and so with Vinyl Station, um, you are the, one of the founding members, yeah, and, and you founded it with Brendan, correct? Was that we actually before Brendan even joined, it was me and that guy called Scott Kosmerick, and he was the drummer for the Gin Blossoms for a long time, and then when he was done with them. We started playing and then and then just decided to to start it up and we, we like like most bands I think we've gone through quite a few quite a few players and um yeah one thing or another led to you know hiring and departures and all kinds of stuff and I've loved every minute like it's been really good and it's always a it's always uh, for me it's just trying to get the songs through and treating them like like I always the song is king the song is king that's it try to make the song as good as possible because that's all we're here for and if well, it's we can, hard to have a band that doesn't have there's no egos involved you know what I mean? people want to have their their baseline show up or their and 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 really to be honest with you it shows in your music there's not any kind of selfishly pushing of any individual artist the song as a whole like you said the song is king and it just as a whole flows you i hope i hope so yeah we've always thought that like i I always wanted the song to just we need to try to get it where it wants to go and sort of let it be in charge a lot of lyrics sometimes um sometimes if they're really if they come out and they're really bad i'll fix them or or i'll try to steer them or something but for the most part i just i want to get my ego smaller and um get out of the way That's and l- if the song wants to be a certain way like who am i like i don't know anything i don't know anything i can't i don't know anything about music or anything so i should just let it do what it wants right and just try to sing it with feeling or um just to get into it right. like i said like an elevator like Every time, even with covers and stuff, like I just want to get in the song uh, and and connect it with with somebody. Right, it might yeah. just be one or two people, but and most of the time it's zero people, so which who, is a really strange thing to say. Most of the songs that I sing throughout a certain year, I think connect with zero people. It's interesting because then those are just yours. I feel like those are. I I mean I I feel like I have those, and to be honest yeah. with you, those are some of my favorites. Like my yeah. my son hears them. You know what I mean? It's yeah. his favorite jam, but it's like that'll never leave this house. You yeah. Know what I mean? Oh no, I I'm playing them in public. <laughs> oh well, you <laughs> better. I'm playing them in public, and it, it just it doesn't connect or something, and and no and no you know, and a lot of times it's not at a at a venue where people are paying attention or whatever, but. I want to leave the possibility open all the time. So I try to do a good job every time, even if no one's listening or it doesn't seem like anyone is. I want to just get in the song and play it right. Um, and then sometimes it 
it happens that somebody in the back or somebody comes up afterwards and goes like, hey, I felt felt that or whatever. Yep. And so that's nice, but it, it's worth doing even if it's just as an exercise or just to always be in the song. Because yep. I think that's that's what we're here for is just to get in the song and, and let it try to do what it's supposed to in the air. Well, that's what was funny with you too. Is is like I said the first time I saw you, I, I told you I went and saw you at Last Exit, um, Brandon Decker. Um, yeah, and it, and it was love a great him. show. I and love I just, that guy. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. wonderful guy, wonderful guy. And and I remember walking away just with your song stuck in my head. And and, and once again, yeah, you find that when you find that connection to artists and you find that connection to music, it just I like what you said that it's it's seventy percent you and it's kind of a meeting in the middle of people. That's actually oh that's yeah, actually beautiful man. It's a relationship. Like I it. If a song gets played and no one hears it, it does it exist? No, it does not. No. You ha- somebody has to hear it and be in it with you and react and connect. And that's a whole thing, which is what's interesting about um, like touring was really fun because we we were able to connect on a on a bigger level with a lot more people. Um, so when we went when we went out and did we opened for Rob Thomas for a long time and we did like 67 cities and he was just amazing and um seeing him um work th- his sh- his show yes was like I-, I saw that over and over if i saw it once i would go oh it's amazing he just happened upon this amazing set and all his the way that he runs his show it's not an accident he's a master performer and he knows exactly how to run his show so we got a lot of that from him but also just his fans like his fans are really open to us and really sweet and we to be able to connect on him on a a large scale like that there's no feeling like it that was really amazing but um it's sort of what you chase now is to get that connection right it doesn't it doesn't matter really the scale or the money or the fame. I was never really interested in fame. I, I don't like it at all. Mostly, I mean, most famous people get are complaining about it. Like, right, I, I right. can't do anything. I'm getting interrupted at dinner with my kids and stuff. <laughs> yep. um, not a lot of people really like it, but there's something about a sort of mass connection that we were able to experience because of that tour that was like, that's really fun. Well, I got to ask you about that because, uh, you know, I, I, I have plenty of friends who have gone on tour with with big artists. And, and I mean, that was one of the things with you that was great is to look you up. And it, it's not like you got done with Rob and it was like, uh, yeah, whatever. The guy just put us on, whatever. What's fascinating is how many videos there are of the two of you together. Like he brought you out or, or he came yeah. out with you guys. I, I don't really know how that worked exactly, but it seemed like he was very welcoming. He was he <laughs> the first day we got there. It was an Alton. Um, and the first day that we got there, he, he cut his sound check short so that we would have a longer, cause he knew it was our first show and like that kind of place in the theater. It was my first time ever using in-ear monitors. And so he was like, so welcoming and so supportive. He told it like, he asked his crew to help us out and he was like unbelievable, like bent over backwards about him, you know? And and uh, just the nicest guy ever, seriously. And a lot of people say that. And uh, I, it, we, I think we became fast friends because he's just a real dude, right? Um. So yeah, I, we just had we just had such fun. I mean, it was a, a just a great experience. But I think a lot of that came from the top down. Like he really welcomed us took us under his wing and and uh well and for someone like him it's funny too because he's been around long enough that he doesn't need to do that he doesn't have to do he that doesn't need to do that but no. there's a genuine love for other songwriters and an appreciation for music i mean yeah. obviously even like i said going back to it very down to earth talking to you about just your songs and accepting that well you know you wrote them but they are their own you know what yeah I mean? it's just it's it's a different way of we've, of we've had many conversations about writing and he has a different writing style he actually taught me a lot about how i write because it's different than his process he has more of a conversational approach um but there's a lot of mutual respect there and then uh, i mean i still want to go out to new york and write with him he's he's just got 
the guy can just still write hooks. I can't believe <laughs> yep. nobody does that. Tom Petty could barely. He was still good after you know, till the end. But um, he's in a very very small group of people that can still write great songs after well, twenty Butch years. Butch Walker is a freak. I mean, Butch yeah. Walker is a monster. I, mean, I can't wait for this record. Oh too. man, it's gonna be good. Oh man, it's just incredible. Yeah. And he's excited about it too. I, I, it's I'm I'm really I can't wait to hear it. That's great. Yeah. So and then the other thing with you, man. When searching your YouTube channel, you got covers like crazy, man. You got some really good covers online. Um, your Sylvan Esso coffee cover is killer. Oh, thanks. I don't even know yeah. if you still that's still out there. I know some artists. Yeah, I mean, still do. Yeah, it's freaking uh, such I a great. I love co- Sylvan Esso. Um, awesome. I learned Die Young just recently. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah, great oh, song, great song, wonderful. Um, I know that if you go, um, if you go onto their Spotify account, you got a, a Feel It Still cover. Um, we did. I think we Portugal have the man. I think we have three up there now. We did a Tom Petty cover. Um, Which one did you do? The waiting. Really? Is that on there? Yeah, I missed it. It's, oh, whoo! So, I we recorded it after he died. Um, that was one. I have. I'm not joking. I don't know if anybody can pull, um, Netflix records, but I'm not kidding. I've watched his documentary on Netflix twelve times. When that came out on DVD. Um, uh, what was that like 10 years ago? I watched that thing so many times. It's the best documentary ever made. It it is, it is the best documentary ever made. Like I, it's one of those things where like, I I know a lot of people wondered like, could they do a new documentary on Tom? And it's like, unfortunately it's already been done. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I mean, you could add some stuff onto the tail end, but just, you know, the, the way he met Mike Campbell, you know what I mean? It's it's four and a half hours and I'm riveted. Every second, every the whole second. time, and and then I, when I get done, I want to watch it again. Yes, yep, unbelievable. Well, it's it, it's inspiring. Um, his ups and downs. Uh, I really what may, is most admirable to me is, is his fuck yous to to anybody who really got in his way. I just feel like yeah. Tom, Tom was not going to no, the, stop for anyone. The industry that come after him. Go ahead. Yep, come He's get me. Gonna, I want to get a a bracelet that says "What would Tom Petty do." <laughs> Yes, and Hell just yeah. when everybody, when anybody has anything, yep. just any, get a damn uh, the torpedoes coming. In any mm-hmm. argument or whatever, you just go. Oh, I wonder what Tom Petty would do. Oh know. yeah, I'm not doing. I'm not doing that. Sorry. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which unfortunately, I've had that since I was a young person. Yeah. I, I did not do well in school. Uh, mostly, I think because of that. No. Some of that also. Uh, it was just like asking a fish to climb a tree, but. It's a lot of the um, rebellion of music, though, right? I mean, that's kind of the. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but if I was like reading a book, and you came up and said, "You have to finish reading that book," I would throw it in the fire. Yep. Done. I go. You <laughs> know what? I was gonna, but now I'm not going to because you want me to. Forget it. Yeah. So which you can imagine how difficult it is to be married to me. I'm so sorry, Christy. <laughs> Christine, <laughs> shout out to you. Yeah. So what's the other song you're doing? You're doing ordinary, right? Yes. Um, which that I, I say in a in a very podcast way. What are you doing? That was specifically a request from me. Um, I uh, really always liked that song for some reason, and I, it was one of the ones that when we recorded it, I wanted to have a song that was specifically for walking in airports. You said that yes. So, because there are a few songs that are for walking in airports, right? Sp- like one of them that comes to mind is the song by Eels called "Fresh Feeling." Put that on in an airport, like don't do it in the in the in the middle, in like the security, <laughs> like in the security line, and then you have to pause it and you have to take off your shoes and stuff. It's like you angry at that. Once point. you get out and you're you got you have all your belt is back on and everything, and you're all arranged and you're you know, put on that song and walk through, especially on those escalators that move like you know in Sky Harbor. Yep, it's perfect. Really, it's just awesome the beat that it's even the whole time you're just walking through your own music video right and i always liked that and so i wanted to do one of those on that album and that i felt like was a really good even it doesn't go anywhere it's not it doesn't crescendo into this giant emotional payoff or anything it just stays Mm -hmm. it's on and it stays and then it's and then it gets done hell yeah hell yeah and it's about a four all the way through. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, 
on your way down, babe In the waiting room Had it up to here It was only once You told me yes And you woke me up The hard way In the room you fall into It was hard to hold on You were ordinary You were hard to find With an open mouth And you woke me up All the way In the room you waited It was hard to hold on You were ordinary You were hard to find With an open mouth And you had it all Just to let it go Well, let's go. We're going to go into a bonus round here, okay? We used to call this a speed round. Okay. Um, just some fun questions. We called it a speed round, but then we start talking, and then, you know, right. yeah, guests yeah. get all anxious that they're on the <laughs> clock, and there is no clock, but, you know, speed round sounds fun. So, uh, what's your favorite dessert? You got a favorite dessert? Mm. I think I just, I had chocolate ice cream last night. That was probably the first dessert I've had in ages. Okay. I don't eat very much sugar. Because, Good for you. well, no, I. A few years ago, I realized that I was the fifth largest land mammal, so I had to stop drinking beer. I got off processed food, and I stopped eating, you know, sugar and stuff. So, hell yeah. But every once in a while, a scoop of chocolate ice cream would just go. Let's go. It goes down easy. Some chocolate ice cream. Yeah. Brandon needs to run to the store and get some chocolate ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite venue you've played? Somewhere specific that just made you feel good. The Ryman. Okay. Where's the Ryman at? The Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. It's church. It is, as, you know, they've got like the stained glass in the back and stuff. And we did we did a lot of bucket list stuff with on that Rob Thomas tour, but we opened for Rob at the Ryman. I mean, we did like the Beacon Theater in uh, New York City was amazing. Wow. wow. We did... Um, What's the uh, one in Austin? ATL. Yeah. Yeah. Um, City. The Moody. Uh, yeah. We yeah, played yeah. the Moody. That was yeah, yeah. that was other level too. There was something about the Ryman that f- just felt. I was sta- my mic stand and stuff was was we were in the Johnny Cash room, and our our green room was the Johnny Cash room and the whole thing and we uh, my mic stand was where there was a picture in our green room of Johnny Cash and Elvis standing on the same wood that was where my mic stand was, where I was standing and played that show. And it was just unbelievable. And you, the sound, the everything, we got a standing ovation. We just did a short, I think it was 20 minutes. And uh, they they seemed like they showed up like, like not, like they're, they ready for a spiritual experience you need, in that venue? Or what? You need to bring it. Okay. They, okay. Like, they weren't ready for just, a, just like, go through the motions. Like, they were like, you walk out there, and we, by the time 
you know, usually people start to clap a little bit when the opening band comes out. Could just to be polite, but they're not going to keep it up because they don't know who you are. It doesn't look you don't look like anyone they know. Weird, show me something with. So by the time you get your guitar on and you get to the microphone, it is crickets. And do you you get nervous? Do you get? I did the first day. First day, and then after that. Well, I I had a weird experience. So we went in. There's like blue wash over the stage, and then there's the the yellow house lights over the audience. And there's a lot of bustling and, you know, all the crew and everything is walking around and doing all the things that they do. And and uh, and then they go, you know, there's like a oh, one and a half minutes to some rock show, whatever. And then they, and then uh, they go, are you guys ready? And you go, no, I no. What are we doing? <laughs> and they go, oh, it's a 30 seconds to rock show. And then they and then ksh, house lights turn off the yellow. So there's just the blue over your stuff. Right. And we're like right at the front of the stage. We've got about eight feet or whatever because they're, you know, we're one of one of two opening bands. Um, and they go go, and you walk out. And I walked out, picked up the guitar, walked to the microphone. By then, everybody has since stopped clapping because right. who who are you? I don't blame them. I would do the same thing. So, and I look up, and there's a just a ton of silhouettes right you can't really see much because of the stage lights and stuff so and i look up and my brain was getting a a a notice from my knees that was like do you want us to stay standing this is really weird we're we're ready to give at any minute or whatever and my much matthew too much and my brain was like yeah it was either have a panic attack and die or who cares this is going to be fun and just rip it up Right. And luckily, I have no, I claim no credit for this. It just landed on have fun and just do your thing, whatever. And I think a a lot of that was just the training of doing cover shows and doing so many shows every year, day in, day out. It just becomes like, okay, now that kicks in and you just play the song. Right. It's not hard. And as soon as we started, it was the most fun I'd ever had. And every night, after that, I was just excited. Yeah. There was no nerves that at feeling all. Feeling of just like, just get me to the stage. It's that twenty minutes where you're the room's filling up and you hear yeah. people talking, and it's just like that anticipation became really fun though because I knew that my mic would work. Right, right. That oh, was the man. one thing. Like, if my mic is on, everything is going to be okay. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's freaking killer. So yeah, that was super fun. But yeah, the nerves kind of went away pretty quickly. Actually, it was just excitement. It was really fun. Nice. Yeah. Um, what are you listening to right now? Oh my! Well, I've been listening to a lot of books on tape, actually. But um, there's a new guy. Oh, I'll just show you. There's a new guy that I think is is really good. I don't know his name because it's like a foreign name. What I was just listening to was the latest album by Bonnie Vare. Yep. Called Twenty Two A Million. Um, just listen to the new Arctic Monkeys, but there's a guy called Albin Lee Meldo. Okay. That's really good. And I'll then I've got out. like Midnight Organ Fight right there. Um, I'm really sad that Scott Hutchison died. Oh so my goodness. He's been oh on, my goodness. that's been on repeat. That has been on um, a lot for sure for me as well. And then I'm, you know, I'm like my throwback stuff goes back to like, I'm listening to some Octoon Baby by U2 and yeah. some green so what by if, REM and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. some of that old stuff that I grew up with. So do you have like a go-to album? I mean, I, obviously we all have lots of albums that we like. To, oh, yeah. we like but I mean, is there is there one or two off the top of your head that, that just really define you, not only as an artist, but just as a person? Um, Octoon Baby was a big, a big one for me. Um up by peter gabriel is also has to be up there with one of those like the way that he crafts songs and um i've heard i think we might have a similar kind of writing style because i've heard he doesn't do that many songs for an album but he does like 70 versions of one song to get to the one that he keeps that's great so a lot of bands will write like we're gonna write like 50 songs and then pick the best 12 right and then record those and then that's the album he does like probably maybe 12 or 15 but then he'll do each of those like 50 times wow 
That's I mean, crazy. some of them they might be less. I don't know. It might, no, I but, might be totally exaggerating it just for the story or whatever. But don't research this. He, don't yeah, he it. does. I think I've heard that he does tons of different versions and really works the song. And I love that. I love taking a song and not giving up on it and giving it a real chance. Whereas if it's not instantly, like I've written only a couple of those that are just good on their own. Right. Right. Like there's a song I, that we have called Revolution that I think is one of those that like you can kind of play it and it's good. Mm-hmm. Like if it was just an acoustic or it's on Spotify by or the whole thing like Revolution. That's just one of those songs. It's a, just a, it came out just sort of a, a good song. And then there are ones that it's it's how you do it. It's you find the rhythm, you find the the different sections and the and the hooks and then the layers. I we love layering and finding out how to play the song the best that it can be. And I think some of those songs, that's what I love about Octung Baby, is like if you play Zoo Station on an acoustic, what is it even? It doesn't even make any sense. Right, right, right. But when you have all the drums and the distortion and the... It's a freaking experience. It's just crazy. So I I love the studio, the art of the studio, as well as trying to obviously write some good songs, but using the production and all the ideas and the, all that stuff to come together, um, which I think Peter Gabriel uh, was really, really good at. And, Hell yeah. I mean, he'll come up with a, a new album every 10 years because he just takes his time, like, wait for it to be right. And um, Anyway. That's special. That's yeah. killer. Yeah, yeah. That's freaking killer. Well... First of all, man, thank you for coming on. This is so fun. I'll, I'm coming back tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's that's the big thing that we have with all of our artists, man, is that this is not this is not like a hey hey we've had Matthew and, and we're done, man. We we want you whatever you come up next, next big show, next big event, next big album. Please come back. So for real, that's every single one of our just, artists. They're all. I was just the, kidding, but I, I was like, I this is really. I mean, an, a I, nice experience. Maybe not tomorrow, I, but you know what I mean. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't but, do it, just invite myself back, but you're more than welcome. You, ha- I really appreciate you having me, and uh, you've been really welcoming and and lovely. So yeah, I, I'm anytime. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Make sure you check out Vinyl Station. Um, they're available wherever you get, you get your music, um, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, wherever you get it. Th- they're there. Um, hopefully, some new music coming out this year. I hope um, so. Yeah. Hoping to get a new yeah. album out would be really exciting. Um, yeah. As I say every week, we have the Proud to Present playlist on Spotify. We put three songs from each artist that we have on the play uh, on this podcast on the playlist. Uh, usually, it's pretty biased. I'll probably pick three that uh, that I really am jamming to <laughs> uh, uh, of your Spotify. Um, and then uh, and yeah. So in closing, as we say every week, uh, do something to make the world a better place. Uh, we're all arguing with each other. We all have an opinion, and, and uh, we're all on the same team in the end. So have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next week.